John, is this your version of Hansel and Gretel? Again, to me, it's in Hollywood. They always have a, you know this this film meets that film. That's how you describe it. Uh, the film and uh, this is Hansel and Gretel meets Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> Any questions from you right away? Because it's late. Take your heart. They want your heart. And you have to take it yourself and, and move, uh, move on into, you know, the fullness of your own self. Uh, and I like that very much about it. Uh, there is a great American, well, he was German, uh, a psychiatrist named Bruno Bettelheim, who left Germany in the late 30s and moved to uh, America, moved to Chicago, and became the chair of the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Chicago, and published a book in the 1970s called The Uses of Enchantment. And it was... Uh, about fairy tale, the, the great benefit fairy tales can have for children because these stories teach them what life is about and how they can, can become adults. And uh, Hansel and Gretel, I mean, this, this, you know, not consciously, but the two little kids running in the woods from the Wicked Witch, I mean, you know, it's, it, it, and as I say, that in America, we, we have to be literal. So in, in Virginia Woolf, they had an imaginary child. Uh, but. They, they have sort of an imaginary child, but it's we had to give it for it had to be given a literal form, and that's the child they love, you know. Uh, I think with ch in, in Bettelheim, and also your your parents always want you to be some other child than who you really are, and it, it can be very you know. So in this case, the metaphor became literal. Also, we're going to take your heart and give it to the good child, the child we really wish you were, and you're not. Peter is up for just about anything, as you know. Any, if you followed his life, it's <laughs> so uh, I, I like I, <laughs> I like Peter very much. He's still a wild character, and he's just one of the best people to have on a set you could ever want because he's nice to everybody. He'll talk to anybody. He'll hang out with anybody. Everyone loves him, and there was a lot of darkness in this story, and he really helped uh, balance out some of those days. Uh, believe me. So uh, Peter's just a great guy, and. Uh, you know, he, he loves to do crazy stuff, so. Okay. More questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, I don't care at the beginning. Hello? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you, you, I didn't get, I, Actually, I, I just don't understand the beginning. The opener. Well, I, I, but uh, you know, so a lot of other people do. So, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 I'm not here to explain the movie. I made the movie. Uh, I think you 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 weren't paying close enough attention. That's that's all I have to say. <laughs> um, I mean, it's uh, the prologue, if you if you want, uh, and the introduction of the, the mother, the character of the mother, as being uh, a heart. Specialist. That's that's very important uh, plot point. You you introduce a character, um, and then in the end you have the epilogue again on uh, a baseball field, and you call that ending a fake, a happy ending. I mean, I don't mean to be cruel and rude, but if you didn't understand it, others did. Uh, there's books I read that everyone understands, and I missed the point. So. Uh, uh, I made the picture, and if you didn't understand it, you know, I, I don't, like I said, I don't want to be rude to you, but if you didn't understand it, no big deal. <laughs> okay, yes, uh, I've had tremendous, uh, I've had tremendous luck with children. Uh, the first time I had to direct a child was a six-year-old actor, and I thought, I'd never directed children. I thought, where am I going to find an actor, a kid six years old, that can do this? And we found, like, four. Uh, so many of them were gifted. And, I, I, again, working with children, I've sort of come to realize that people are born with gifts. Uh, uh, working with a six-year-old actor who hasn't, go, you know, just started school, has not studied acting, is just gifted, born with a gift. And uh, both of these kids... Uh, I just loved working with them. They were great kids. They were extremely gifted. And to watch them, watch young Natasha, she's just so gifted. She's, she's just got such instincts, and she's easy to direct, and she's a nice kid. And 
both of their mothers were actually cool because of course their mothers have to be with them, which that's pretty rare. So I love working with those kids. Uh, they were easy to direct. They were just so. Yeah, about that. Um, the, you the girl, uh, who I thought. She, was always, she would always get very emotional, and I was wondering how much freedom you left them to kind of go with the scene, or was that something you wanted? The, the older I get, uh, the less I direct, okay. and, uh, and you hire the right people and give them a lot of uh, leeway, and then you adjust them slightly, but no, she's, you know, actors trade on emotion, that's, that's their, you know, that's... <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, but I mean, she never... She's, She's just brilliant. I, her mother brought this uh, video that was made of her when she was like six. And she was in her little peak pajamas with bunny ears on them. And she had a, a, you know, a cordless microphone. And she was just born to perform. And she was so amazing. Uh, uh, the, the way she got the role was, I don't know if you know who Kira Sedgwick is, but it's Kevin Bacon's wife. Who, and she's an actress who, what was her TV show? Did you have her, her TV, The Closer? Anyway, she, she's a wonderful actress, and I knew her because I knew her husband. And she called me when she heard we were casting this movie. She said, I just worked with this actress. I understand you're looking for a girl about 12. She said, this girl is the best actor I've ever worked with. And so we read her and we hired her. It's about 10 million. Yeah. Twenty-eight, and it was very difficult. I'm gonna, I'm gonna whine because when you work with children, I mean, we in the U.S. we shoot a 12-hour day. Every day is 12 hours, usually longer, but 12 hours is the standard day. But children, you can only work depending on their age. Uh, Charlie was 13. You could work 13-year-olds nine hours a day, but Natasha was 12. You could work them eight hours a day, and Michael Shannon was in a play on Broadway, so every day at 6 o'clock, he went to Broadway. And there were no scenes that were just Samantha Morton, so, you know, it was very difficult to shoot this picture in 28 days with those limitations. You, you said that uh, you probably shot your last film on celluloid with this one. I can't be certain, but it seems that you know all the labs have closed. And, uh, there's no one to you know it doesn't pay to keep a lab open. There's not enough film being shot, so I think it's time to make the transition to digital. It's you know it's the future. It's film is going to die. <laughs> any any projects you you could talk about? Uh, I've been working for six years on, on uh, my fourth Bill Murray movie. And maybe it's going to happen over the next month or two, and we'll see. So, and, and that will be shot on, on digital after, right? Yeah. And uh, one one thing is for sure, uh, your you have a standing invitation to the Munich Film Festival. So come come back with your fourth Bill Murray film. Thank you very much, John, for being. And thank you, Robert. Thank you all for coming, and uh, it's been great to be in Munich uh, for the third time. Thanks.